Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing the perfect makeup tag. We will be discussing the products that have the most perfect qualities to them and I am super excited to introduce you guys to this tag. If you are excited for the video, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel before you leave. I am super excited about this video, so let's go ahead and get started. Today's video is in collaboration with the beautiful Morgan Turner. We have been wanting to do a collab for a really long time, I feel like, and we finally found the perfect thing to do, and we made this makeup tag. We called it the perfect makeup tag, and we have some really fun questions in here. If you are a content creator and you want to do this tag, please feel free to do so. And if you don't have a channel, you are invited to write down your answers down in the comment section because I am very interested in knowing which ones you consider to be the most perfect products from your collection. Also, please make sure to watch Morgan's perfect makeup tag video, which I will have linked down below and subscribe to her channel. Her channel is amazing. I'm obsessed with all the videos she posts. I love her personality. She will tell you exactly as she sees it. She's extremely honest and detailed with her reviews, so I know that you guys will absolutely love her. So make sure to go check out her video and subscribe to her channel. Also, she recently became a full-time YouTuber, so she and I are both in this journey together, which is so freaking exciting. I have one more thing to tell you before we start this video, and that is that the Refer Crease Eye Bundle is back in stock as of today. Last month, they restocked their core eye trio, which I absolutely love. Brushes number one and number three are brushes that I use in every video for crease work and also so the number one is perfect to pack on the collar underneath the eye. And the crease eye bundle that just restocked today is my second most used brush bundle from Refer. You guys always hear me talking about brush number 15. This is their most perfect crease blush to really diffuse your transition color. This is the one that I always reach for. Then we also have brush number 13, which is the most perfect brush to blend out the shadows and smoke out your under eye area. You always hear me talking about this one too. The number 14 brush I sometimes use for underneath the eye, but also for like outer corner work, if you have hooded eyes or small eyes and you want a brush that blends things very easily, nice and fluffy, but also very small, the number 14 brush is the perfect brush for you. And lastly, this is the one that I honestly use the least out of this set. This is brush number 12, but it comes really handy for cream eyeshadows. This one I use to pack and blend cream cream eyeshadows very easily. It's a little bit more dense, so it's just perfect for cream products. So as of today, the Crease Eye Bundle is back at the concept store for 40% off. It's going to be $52, and I totally recommend that you get it. You guys have been giving me amazing feedback on the brushes that you bought last month. Everybody seems to be absolutely loving their purchase, so I'm telling you, this is a really good set to add onto your collection because you're going to have everything you need to create the most perfect eye looks. They're also adding to their concept store the brush number 24, which is this one here, and this brush is perfect for bronzer. So if you want a really good bronzing or powder brush, this one is also very highly recommended. And of course, I'm leaving you the link to the Refer website as well as all of the links to all of the products I'm about to talk about down in the description box of this video. So if you're interested in purchasing anything, please use my links down below. Now let's get started with the perfect makeup tag questions. And question number one is, which primer creates the perfect base? I had a much harder time with other questions, but this one was actually very easily answered for me. The primer to me that gives me the most perfect base has to be the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. This is an extremely multifunctional primer and it is a bit pricey, but I honestly think it's worth it because it kind of balances your skin where like my forehead doesn't get oily, but my cheeks don't get dry. It fills in my pores very nicely, but not to the point where things are like rolling over and it has the most perfect natural finish to it where like you can put anything on top of it and it doesn't necessarily change the texture 
or the finish of any makeup that you put on top but it makes everything look very nice and smooth I also like that it's not too thick of a primer again just perfection it is the primer that does it all and I'm pretty sure this one works on most skin types and all skin tones so definitely highly recommended this is the primer that creates the most perfect base hands down moving on to question number two which foundation has the perfect finish and I want to share with you all three foundations that I thought of I immediately thought of the air flash foundation by Dior this one has a medium buildable to full coverage a natural finish and it looks really really beautiful on the skin I also thought of the Armani luminous silk foundation which is a little bit newer to my collection but I've definitely really enjoyed using it and it is everything I like in a foundation it's very thin medium buildable coverage it has a natural finish I will say natural to matte finish actually and then of course I also thought of my Pat McGrath foundation that just gives me the most perfect skin like finish it has a medium coverage and it's buildable now if the question was about the foundation coverage I think my answer would have been different but we're looking for the foundation that has the perfect finish and because my skin is so dry I consider the foundation with the most perfect finish to be my Pat McGrath foundation it is the foundation that I'm wearing today I feel like if we had said just the most perfect foundation period I would have gone for the air flash but the air flash flash can sometimes look a little bit dry on my very dry skin and the Pat McGrath foundation always has a beautiful natural to glowy finish on me. I wish it had just a little tiny bit more coverage than it does. However, it is a medium coverage foundation that you can build up so I do end up having the result that I want with it and in my opinion for my dry skin this one has the most perfect finish because it makes me look natural and made up but it never looks dry or cakey on me. So the Pat McGrath Sublime Perfection Foundation definitely has the perfect finish in my opinion. Moving on to question number three, which concealer has the perfect coverage? For this one, I immediately thought of my Push Up Concealer by Pure. I thought of my YSL Full Cover Concealer and also, of course, my Pat McGrath Concealer. I feel like these are my top three ride or die concealers right here. I love the creaminess, the coverage, and the hydration that the Pure Concealer gives me. However, I do know that I usually tend to prefer to use one of these two when I want my under eyes to look the best ever. I feel like with this one, it's mostly my fault. I can sometimes overdo it and it looks a little bit too thick, but it's because I apply too much, but whatever. Point is, with these, I get a little bit more of a perfect application. Now, this one right here, I absolutely love. If this question was the perfect finish, I would have gone with the YSL full cover because it has the perfect finish in my opinion. However, it is more of a medium coverage concealer so it doesn't have the perfect coverage. I always have to apply that one with a little bit of a color corrector underneath. So that leaves the Pat McGrath concealer. I swear to you, I didn't want to use as many Pat McGrath products. I quadruple checked myself every time in case there was any other alternative to Pat McGrath because I feel like I'm milking it, but whatever. So the Pat McGrath concealer is definitely my number one favorite. I feel like with this one, a little bit goes a long way, but if I apply a little bit too much, it's not a big deal. It covers absolutely everything and it has a really beautiful finish that it's never too matte or too thick. So all around, this right here is my perfect concealer when it comes to coverage. I also want to note that I have had this concealer for over a year now and I use it constantly and I still have concealer left. So this is also a concealer that is going to last you forever and it's not super expensive, especially for a Pat McGrath item. So this is worth every penny and if you haven't tried it yet, I definitely think you should. It is perfection. Okay, so question number four is which powder gives the perfect blur? Now with this one, you guys know I always use my Pat McGrath powder for my under eyes and it is my perfect under eye powder. However, it's not necessarily the most blurring powder. I feel like when it comes to blur, I'm thinking more so of a powder that will blur my whole face and that is not what I use this one for. So actually the powder that gives me the best blur is my Gucci powder. This one is a little bit newer to my collection. Maybe I've had it for like a month, a month and a half now. This powder looks 
so beautiful on this skin. It definitely gives me the perfect blur. I prefer to apply it with a very soft brush that is not going to pack on too much product because a little bit goes a very long way as far as the blurring properties of this powder. This is the powder that I put on my grandma. I'm gonna like insert a little clip of me applying it on her. It fully transformed her foundation look to something that looked so nice and velvety and even all over the face. This powder is incredible. I have been reaching for it non-stop and I'm not usually someone who reaches for powder at all. As soon as my under eyes are set, I'm usually good to go. But with this one, I just really like that it adds a little bit more coverage and it really blurs the pores right here on my cheeks. I use it for the center of the forehead as well. I feel like my experience with Gucci Beauty has been very up and down. Like I've really disliked some things and really loved some others. This right here is one of my top two favorite products from Gucci Beauty. The other one being the bronzer. It is incredible. So, so good. Question number five, which bronzer has the perfect undertone? And now let me show you my like top contestants for this question. So here are the three bronzers that I immediately thought of. I thought of the Dior Forever um, bronzer in number five, Warm Bronze. I thought of my Gucci bronzer, which I have in the number two. And I also thought of my Huda Beauty Glowish bronzer in the number three, tan light. Ultimately, I went with this one, which is great news because this is actually the most affordable of the three of them, and let me explain why. We're talking about a bronzer with the perfect undertone, and while I absolutely love that the Gucci bronzer in the number two has a very nice cool undertone. I feel like I might not want that very cool undertone for every occasion. I love it for nighttime looks, but for during the day, it can sometimes be like a teeny tiny bit too harsh. For nighttime looks though, perfection. So it is just a teeny tiny bit too cool of an undertone for it to be the perfect bronzer. As far as the Dior Forever, I have shade 5, which is the lightest shade that they released in America. And it is just a little bit darker than what my perfect ideal bronzer would be. I sometimes find myself having to go back and blend it a little bit extra just because the color that I was able to get, which again is the lightest color that they released in America, um, is just a bit too dark for my complexion. Oh, I also thought of the Charlotte Tilbury, let me pull it. I forgot this one. I also thought of the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer in the number two, but this one I have the opposite problem to my Dior one. It's a little bit too light, so I find myself having to go back and build it a little bit more than I should. So to me, the bronzer with the perfect undertone is the Glowish Bronzer by Huda. That is, of course, the bronzer that I'm wearing today. And as you can see, my skin is very neutral. It's not too yellow. It's not too pink. And I need something that is kind of in the middle for it to be my perfect undertone in a bronzer. And I like that this bronzer is not orangey, but it's also not overly cool tone. It's right in the middle. Again, I have mine in the number three. It also has the perfect finish to it. It doesn't ever make my face look dry or powdery because it has a very natural finish and it builds up and it blends out extremely nicely. This is an amazing formula in a bronzer. I have been enjoying it so much lately. Highly recommended and in my opinion right now from what I have in my collection, it is the bronzer that for me has the perfect undertone. Question number six is which blush has the perfect shade? And I actually went through my collection, saw a bunch of the shades that I particularly have been enjoying lately and I have two blushes and I'll tell you why I have two. They are the exact same color. So before I tell you which ones they are, let me show you the side-by-side -side swatches. If I were to have answered this question like a year ago, I think I would have gone for a mauve pink blush, but I think my blush preferences have changed as of lately, and I now like blushes that are right in the middle of like a pinky, peachy type of a look. So here are the two blushes that I selected, and as you can see, the color is exactly the same. These are two different blushes in my collection. Look at it, even like the undertone and everything. 
exactly the same color which was definitely a very nice discovery so the one that I first thought of because I've been reaching for it very often lately and I really love the shade is the Pat McGrath blush in the color nude Venus but then I thought I wonder what the difference is between that one and the Tower 28 cream blush which I've been also totally raving about lately and to my surprise 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 these two blushes are the exact same color so one is a powder one is a cream the finishes are slightly different because the consistency of them is different but the color is perfection and it is exactly the same so this one up here is the nude venus from pat mcgrath and this one is the tower 28 and the color is magic hour so both of these are amazing there is quite the price difference. The Tower 28 one is a lot more affordable. Definitely what I consider to be my perfect blush shade. Question number seven is which highlighter has the perfect finish? And this one was another one of those questions that I immediately knew I was going to answer with one and only one item and that is the Natasha Denona I need a nude glow highlighter now this question is not about the perfect shade yet I would recommend this one specifically if you want a shade that you can wear with anything this question is about the perfect finish and Natasha does also have this formula of highlighter in her cheek duo so I absolutely enjoy this more pinkier golden shade as well ignore my visitor right there but this right here is definitely what i consider to be my perfect finish and the reason is that i don't have the smoothest cheeks like they could definitely be much better i'm definitely having larger pores now than when i was younger so sometimes highlighters just don't look the best on my cheekbones i, I like to embrace the shine regardless but i do sometimes feel a little bit self-conscious about having bumps on my cheeks and i feel like this formula from natasha denona is the most forgiving when it comes to highlighters that have really nice high shine that perform really well this is basically the formula that lets me see the least amount of texture on my cheekbones therefore it is my absolute favorite and what I consider to be my highlighter with the perfect finish question number eight is which lipstick has the perfect formula now for this one I immediately thought of Charlotte Tilbury and the very Victoria lipstick specifically because I love that shade on me and that formula I think it's incredible however we didn't say the perfect shade of lipstick. Very Victoria from Charlotte Tilbury would definitely be my perfect shade of lipstick because I can wear that one to death. Like, I could wear it anywhere, anytime. It is perfection as far as a shade is concerned. But then I thought, well, we're talking about formula specifically, so which formula is perfect and so I kind of, in my mind, was like, okay, it has to be a lipstick that you don't need a lip liner for. It has to be a lipstick that has the shine that you want or the perfect finish that you want. And it has to be a lipstick that applies easily and lasts long enough. So because I wanted my perfect lipstick formula to meet all those requirements, I have been more so into shiny lipsticks lately than matte lipsticks so the matte formula from Charlotte Tilbury was no longer an option for me and so the lipstick that I find that has the most perfect formula at the moment is the cream lipsticks by Huda Beauty it has to be the cream lipsticks specifically it is the lipstick that I'm wearing right now I'm wearing the color Angel my only doubt was that I thought this lipstick had to have a lip liner but I am wearing it today with no lip liner and it looks really nice without a lip liner. I love that this one is a lipstick and a lip gloss in one as well. Look at the finish that it gives my lips. It looks like I have a lipstick on with a gloss over the top. So it is like an everything in one kind of lipstick, my perfect lipstick formula. The only thing that makes this lipstick not be the absolute perfect lipstick, I would say, is that it's not going to last you through like a meal. It's definitely a lipstick that you'll have to reapply a couple of times 
throughout the day but it meets the rest of my requirements so it is the most perfect lipstick that I could think of in my collection at the moment. One more thing that pushed that lipstick over the rest of the lipsticks in my collection is that every single shade that I have tried from those Huda Cream lipsticks I have loved. Even colors that I don't usually reach for because it has that formula and that finish I love them. So yeah, let's move on to question number nine. So question number nine is which palette has the perfect shimmers? I am a shimmer obsessed person. So this was a question that I really wanted to come up with like a perfect answer to. So let me walk you guys through my thought process. Obviously, when it comes to perfect shimmers, I'm thinking Pat McGrath, and Pat McGrath's best shimmers are her Astral Blitz shades. So what I did was I opened every single one of my Mothership palettes from Pat McGrath, which are the ones that have the Astral Blitz shades in them. The Astral Blitz shades, by the way, on a Mothership palette are the colors to the right of the palette. So I opened every single one of them and I compared the color story of just the Astro Blitz shades in each palette and I selected the palette that had the best Astro Blitz shades in my opinion, meaning Astro Blitz shades that would match a lot of different colors, a lot of different outfits that you can wear for a lot of different occasions. The Mothership palette that I ended up selecting was Mothership number seven and these right here, these up here are the Astro Blitz shades that I thought were the most perfect. So let me swatch them for you. I am wearing three out of the four that come in this palette so you can see that like pinky undertone on the inner corner and the peachy golden shade right here and the incredible beautiful glittery on the inner side of my eyelid. Chef's kiss. I love Astro Blitz shades. Let me swatch them for you. Okay, I had to lower the light because these are so light reflecting that I was going to blind you. So these are what I consider to be the perfect shimmers right here. So we have this golden peachy pinky shade right here. This one is a mirror. It is the shimmer with the most reflection ever. We have a really beautiful metallic gold shade. And this one here, I really love, even though on my finger swatch it doesn't look that incredible because it has a really beautiful opalescent pinky undertone. Let me go ahead and swatch them. Just take a look right here and tell me these are not the most perfect shimmers ever. I absolutely love them. I think they are so girly and beautiful and you can really wear these anywhere. Okay, we have one more question to go. That is question number 10. And the question is, which palette has the perfect color story? This one was difficult to say the least because I wanted a palette that had nice neutral shades, that had good transition colors, that had nice shimmers, but that also had some pops of color in the palette, right? And I ended up selecting one that I 100% think has a perfect color story, but it doesn't necessarily have my perfect color story because it's missing a few shades in there to really be my perfect color story in a palette. I would definitely like some light pinky shades like the ones in my shimmers or um, some burgundy shades for it to be like absolute perfection. But this one is as close I can get to a perfect color story in a palette from the palettes I have in my collection and you'll be surprised to find out that it's not a Pat McGrath palette. <laughs> Um, it is the gold palette from Natasha Denona. This is my number one most favorite Natasha Denona palette. And this palette has beautiful neutral shades, nice transition colors. Did I just lose a shade? <gasps> Surgery has been performed on this shade right here. So ignore its scars, but it's back. I was saying this palette has really beautiful neutral mattes. It has very nice transition colors. It's got a couple of pops of teal, which I definitely love. And it has beautiful, beautiful shimmers with incredible glittery toppers in it. So it is very close to perfection. Again, I think that for it to have my perfect 
color story for like myself. <laughs> um, I would definitely love some more um, pinky toned shades and some burgundies. But besides that, it meets every single one of my other requirements. So it is very, very close to perfection in a color story. And I absolutely love the gold palette by Natasha Denona. So those were all 10 of Morgan and I's questions. I'm dying to hear what you guys think are the most perfect products in your collection. So if you feel up to it, please let me know your answers down in the comment section. I will definitely be reading those. If you're interested in any of the products I just mentioned or in the refer brush restock, definitely check my links down in the description box. And now that you've watched this video, head over to Morgan's video and see what she considers to be the most perfect product in her collection. Subscribe to her channel, tell her that I sent you. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. I truly hope that you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you you did and if you're here from Morgan's channel please subscribe before you leave thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you back in the next video bye